Tesla has introduced a new low voltage connector standard. And is it important? Is it going to become something that everyone uses? Is Tesla themselves going to use it? And does it even matter? The answers are yes, maybe, yes, and yes. You're coming out saving time here. I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. So what we're looking at is this uh, big announcement. Tesla doesn't usually do blog posts, but they did one for the first time since the introduction of the Model 3 performance and Highland variation. So here it is. Tesla offers Cybertruck's 48 volt connectors as a low voltage standard for the automotive industry to adopt. They're proposing an industry wide standard for low voltage that should make it cheaper and easier for everyone to manufacture and build and repair cars with some connectors that just plain work. We've seen the success Tesla has had making their own connectors in the past, including NACS, which we'll get to in a minute. So the 48 volt system uh, has advantages uh, because 12 volt connectors are getting quite old. Cybertruck steering, for example, could not have been done effectively without a 48 volt architecture. These connectors helped make it happen. Tesla says it now requires more than 200 links with an ever increasing number of connector types. So it's proposing a new standard where just six connector types would cover more than 90% of typical applications. I think 90% might be a little lower than what we need and typical. It's doing some heavy lifting here, but does it matter? Does it? Connectors come in a miniature packaging too. All the while they use independent secondary locks and durable single wire sealing. So they're good connectors. We know they know how to do this. But what, what does this bring to mind for me? This old XKCD comic situation. There are 14 competing standards. 14, that's ridiculous. We need to develop one universal standard that covers everyone's use case. Situation. Okay, now there's 15 competing standards. Feels like that could happen. Those old standards are not going away. Now, you could say, well, yes, but the charging has become uniform and really it's uniform by market, not by the globe. But in Europe, the CCS combo uh, was mandated. The European Union, just like with USB type C said, hey man, we can't have a million different connectors out there. We need one. And without any input from Tesla, we're gonna choose a big clunky one that the Europeans like and Tesla doesn't. But it happened in the US, but this didn't necessarily happen in the US. In the US, it was a different system where kind of everybody uh, just took to the standard. They realized that superchargers make up three out of four fast chargers and have set the standard. Uh, they did that kind of by brute force. This standard known as NACS, the North American Charging Standard, bold, audacious, it worked, has been adopted by all large automakers with manufacturers and charge point operators transitioning to this standard by 2025. Some of them announced that they would be there by 2025, and it remains unclear if they actually will. But you can get a standard through on your own. You can just make it happen. And that's kind of what we're looking at, but does it matter? It's all under the skin. You can choose to use a better connector, or you can just stick with what you already have that may or may not do the job well. If they do, it'll take years to get there. By the way, I am holding a subscription drive. Please subscribe. I'm hoping to get there. Uh, there, 100,000. That's my goal. I want to get there. Um, things change at 100,000. Uh, benefits unlock. Uh, it's leveling up in the real world, at least my real world. So let's look at this here. We've got to share this tab. Tesla wants to change the industry standard in manufacturing, reduce manufacturing costs, reduce cost to repair. Recent blog post, they said LVCS, which aims to reduce the variety. So yeah, it's like the USB-C. Now here's a good, nice blown up picture where you can see what they look like. And they're all uh, not, uh, they're dummy proof. They're pokey yoka. You can't get them backwards. You can't put them in the wrong spot. They just work. So uh, the architecture was designed to accommodate next-gen autonomous systems with features like single wire sealing and independent secondary locking mechanisms. And they want the industry to follow their leads. Tesla is inviting device suppliers and manufacturers to join them. Well, I don't want to learn how it works. I'm too concerned about that. I don't want to learn how it works. Well, good news, you don't have to. You can just tell the people who make your blinkers or your or your seat adjustments, hey, you guys are already making the one with the Tesla connectors, right? Just use those. 
Well, well, we have to engineer it. Do you? Because most manufacturers don't do a lot of that engineering in-house. They leave the systems to outside groups and they just handle the integration poorly. So if this is something that the manufacturers are already going to be doing anyway for Tesla, it's easier for them to do it for you as well, Mr. Hyundai, if that is your real name. I don't think it is, but that's not the point. The idea is why did Tesla share their 48 volt handbook? They did all the engineering and then just gave the handbook to suppliers, to other manufacturers and said, join us, won't you? It's better. I know you've been wanting to do this for generations. I've done the hard work. Just jump on board. What does Tesla get out of that? Well, you could say it's for the mission. It's sustainable. It makes everybody's cars a little bit better and that's good for everyone. But really what I think it's about is if the manufacturers are doing it and they're doing it well, the suppliers, I mean, then they're going to do it well for everyone. The more companies that do it the Tesla way, the easier it is for suppliers to do it at all. So I think that's tremendously helpful. And here's the actual blog post itself from which all these articles are cribbed. And it's just that over the last 20 years, cost and complexity uh, has doubled. Uh, a typical vehicle has over 200 connections and uh, they're all different. Not all, but there's a lot of different ones. You've seen Sandy Monroe talk about how uh, a lot of manufacturers, even Tesla early on, would use too many different types of rivets, too many different types of fasteners, nuts, bolts, all that. Can we narrow it down? Can we get fewer? Because fewer is better and universal is better still. And uh, just because we're having fun and we want to throw in some bonus material, I'm regularly asked, why doesn't Tesla do something like solar panels on their cars? And we know the answer, the amount of miles you would get on a car during the course of a given day, it's very small. You could fit a couple panels, each of a couple hundred watts. You're like, well, that's great. If I've got three panels doing 300 watts each, that's, that's 900 watts. That's getting me four to five miles per hour of charge, right? It would, if your car was facing the sun, your car's not facing the sun, your car is facing all directions, uh, specifically up. And unless it's high noon at the equator, that is not facing the sun. So there's a lot of weight and there's a lot of disadvantage. Uh, you've got the weight, you've got the cost, you've got the added complexity for minimal gain. When it comes to something like Aptera, where consumption is expected to be very, very low and the surface area is quite high considering the size of it, the weight of it, the overall footprint, you're going to have more advantage with something like Aptera. For most cars, it's a gimmick. I know Fisker had it on its sunroof and it just served to feed the low voltage system. It didn't actually give you miles directly. And then they said, well, why don't we put it on top on the roof of semi trailers? Surely a semi trailer has enough roof area that it would work. Yeah, but roof, but semi trailers are frequently disconnected, parked for long periods of time. What happens then? Do we just shut it off? We're not getting the advantage. We may have a disadvantage. We definitely have a weight penalty and a complexity penalty. And who owns the trailer? I don't even own the trailer. It's not my trailer. I'm just hauling it. So if it was a closed environment like FedEx with their own FedEx trailers and their own FedEx logistics, maybe it would make sense, but you still have to balance the weight and the cost. And I think it would take a long time for it to pay off. So the bonus material, of course, that we have to show is another XKCD comic. Should I put solar panels on it? Well, let me ask you, does it move around? In this case, yes. Okay. Does it have a regular chance to recharge uh, or swap batteries? Well, let's see. Can it recharge regularly? Yes. Well, then probably not. Okay. Well, then let's say no. Well, <laughs> when running, is it hot to the touch? Um, well, on, a, on, a, on an EV? No. So then it would be maybe. But that's only if you can't charge. Another high quality banger from Mr. Monroe. Uh, it is a great comic if you haven't checked it out. Very nerdy. So that's why I love it. And that's why I think a lot of my peeps might love it. What did I miss? What did I misunderstand? I'll leave it in the comments below and stay tuned and juicy. And I cannot wait. I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots on the flippity flop.